Hello, this is Brad. I am one of your consumer technology specialists here at Midcontinent Public Library, and welcome back to our Windows Widgets series. Today, we will be looking at the Windows Video Editor app. This is a simple and handy tool that allows you to edit videos within Microsoft Windows. In the past, Windows had what was called Movie Maker. Newer editions of Windows do not include Movie Maker, but they do have this handy video editor. Today, I am going to demonstrate how you can use this tool to make fun video projects. Let's go ahead and get started. I am first going to navigate to the Start menu in the bottom left-hand side of my screen. And I want to get to my alphabetical menu, so I will click any letter here to get to that. I'm going to click this letter C. And I am going to click the letter V to find the video editor. And there I will see near the top the video editor. And I will click on that to get started. Here we are in the video editor. We don't have any projects here, so let's go ahead and get started by clicking New Video Project. It's going to prompt me to name my video. The video footage that we will be looking at today is of a little toy astronaut helping me out in my office. I am going to name my video and then click OK. And here we see our workspace. We have the project library. That is where we will bring in videos and photos. We have the storyboard down below here. And then over here is the preview window where we can watch our video project. I'm going to click Add. And we are going to bring in some videos to our project. I can bring in videos from this PC. That will search my entire computer. I could get them from the web, but right now I am going to look from my collection. This takes us to the Windows Photos app where we see our photos and videos. And to get started, I am just going to open this one video. I select it, and then I click Add. Here we see that video up here in my project library area. But to start working on it, I need to drag it down to my storyboard section. And now I can view the video clip over here in the preview window as well. Here we see the astronaut helping me type on this keyboard. And then the camera pans up to show the result of his efforts. And I'm not really happy with how that video ended. It's almost like I dropped my camera there at the end. And so if there's ever anything you want to take out of your videos, we can use this trim feature. I'm dragging this little icon. This lets me know what this frame of my video looks like. And I'm going to look for the frame I want my video to end on. And I would like my video to end right there before that camera seems to fall. These little bumpers signify the beginning and the end of our new video clip. So if I drag this one to right there, that will be the new ending of my video clip. You can tell in a couple different places that my video will be shorter now that I have trimmed it. And here is my new video. There we see that I successfully trimmed off that end bit that I did not like. 
I do want to clarify that we are not modifying the original video. We are only modifying this copy that was created when we brought the video into our project. So any changes I make to my video will not affect the original video. I can adjust the speed of my video if I want to. Right now it is set to normal speed. But if I drag it to the right, I can speed up my video. And I can also slow down my video by dragging this to the left hand side. For now, I'm just going to leave that the normal speed. And there are quite a few other ways we can edit our videos within the video editor. If I click split, it will actually allow me to split my video into two separate clips. Maybe I want to distinguish this part of my video where the astronaut is typing on the keyboard versus this part that shows the screen. So if I split my video right there, I will now have two separate videos. And this could be handy in case I wanted to apply some different effects to one of these clips, but not both. For instance, maybe I want to apply a filter to one of these. Here are my filters. Some of these are subtle, they change the light and coloration of my video. Some are a little bit more drastic. I am going to do this black and white one here. And here we see that it is the same video, but now it is in black and white. I also have some 3D effects that I can add to my video. Over here on the right hand side, I have a whole library full of different 3D effects that I can add to my video. Let's try out this live sign. And since it's a three dimensional effect, I can move it around and I can rotate it. Let's see what that looks like within my video. I can adjust the volume of my 3D effects, and if I don't want it, I can click the X. I can search for effects too. Maybe I want to look for some snow. Using this little blue bar, I can change when the effect will appear in my video clip. I can change how long or how short it is as well. For this effect, I am actually going to modify it so that it lasts the entire duration of this clip. And then I'm going to click Done when I'm happy with that. Now we can watch part of my video that has the snow effect on it and is in that black and white. And we can see that once that clip is over, those effects do not carry over to my next clip. If I wanted to have that effect on my second clip within my storyboard, I would need to select it and then go to Filters. And apply the filter just to that video. And now they're both in black and white but only that first clip will have the snow effect. Another thing I can do to my videos is add text. I can type in the text that I want up here. 
and it will appear on my screen in my clip. I can control when it begins and when it ends by dragging these beginning and ending bumpers. And then I have style options over here. There are different fonts and text styles that I can choose from. I also have different layout options as well. I can have this text be in the middle, at the top, on one of the sides, or in the middle, but just a little bit smaller, or at the bottom. And I'm happy with that, so I will click Done. I can also modify some parts of my videos within the storyboard section as well. I can adjust the volume of a clip using this little slider right here. And if I right click on my video, I can access a lot of those tools we've already seen. The trim feature, the split, I can go to edit and see a lot of those same editing features I have already used. Let's go ahead and bring in some more videos and even some photos to our project. I'm going to add and then I'm going back to my collection. And now I'm going to select multiple videos and some photos. And once I have selected everything that I want to bring into my project, I will click the Add button. And there we see those new videos and photos in my project. There is another way we can place videos into our project. We clicked and dragged earlier. I can also just select the photo I want and click Place in Storyboard. I only want to bring in this video right now, so I will click it to select it. And then I can click Place in Storyboard, and it will bring it down to my storyboard. And I actually want this clip to be the first clip in my storyboard. And so I can click and drag to move those around. So I'm simply going to click on this and I can then drag it to the front of my storyboard. And now it is the first video. And this typing video with the snow effect has become my second clip. I am now going to bring in another video and I'm going to right click, select place in storyboard. This is a video of the astronaut looking at this Van Gogh painting. Now I don't like how there are these big black bars on this, but I do have a way to get rid of them. If I click this little square button, I can click remove black bars. Now I can't see my entire video now. So it just kind of depends what I want for my video. Do I want to see all of the details or do I really want to remove those black bars? In this instance, I'm going to remove the black bars and keep my video like it is here. And let's go ahead and bring in a photo to our storyboard. We can rotate our photo within our storyboard. I can also rotate videos as well, so that's not exclusive to photos. If one of my videos was sideways, or if I just wanted to do something kind of fun, I could move it around. And I'm going to remove the black bars. And there are some options unique to photos. I can change the duration. This is going to be how long my photo lasts, because basically we are turning our photo into a little video. 
I can also apply motion to it. This will just kind of give my video a moving effect so maybe it feels more fitting within a video project. Here we see zoom out center, and here we have a pan left, which is slowly pans to the left. You might find that this keeps your photos interesting within your video project. All right, we've got a pretty good little project going here. I think I want to add a title card, so I will click the button that says Add Title Card. And I want mine to be at the very beginning of my story. And I can modify this title card. The first thing I'm going to do is change the duration. Just like with our photo, I can make it last for as long as I want to. I can change the background color. Here we see some different color options. I can also add my own custom color below if I wanted to. And then I can modify my text as well. I want my text to match the title of my video, so I'm going to put that in here. I have some options to change the layout of this. And also over on the right hand side, we do see I could change the text style if I wanted to as well. I can change how long this will last within my title card. When I'm happy, I press done. Okay, our video is coming together. Another really fun thing that we can add to our video is background music. Here we have lots of options for songs. I can adjust the volume if I want to. These are all really fun and energetic. I am going to click this Mozart piece. And then if I want to, I can click Sync Your Video to the Music's Beat, which can be fun, but sometimes it will modify your video clips. We can tell that my video clip right here was reduced to one second to fit the beat of the music. If I wasn't happy about that, I could, I could use my back arrow to undo that. And then I would go into my background music and unclick this box. And then scroll down and make sure I have my Mozart piece selected. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at my video. I can make this full screen and let's watch. And that is my video. I can minimize my screen by clicking this button right here. I could also add custom audio to my video as well. If I clicked add audio file, it would search my computer and I could add whatever music or audio that I wanted to, to my video project. And when I am totally done with my project, I will click finish video. 
and here I have some different options. The higher quality the video, the bigger the file. I may need to consider how big I want that file to be. Once I'm done, I will click export. It will prompt me to save it somewhere, and then I will click export. It will be available wherever I told the video editor to save that video. If I go back to the video editor, we will be able to see this project hanging out. And we can see that video project we were working on right there. Any other projects we had would also be saved in this area. If you're interested in the Windows Photos app, which we briefly looked at to bring in photos and videos, be sure to check out our video on that. We dedicated a whole video showing how you can use the Windows Photos app to edit and modify your photos. And that is the Windows Video Editor. It is a simple video editor that allows you to make some fun projects. If you have been wanting to make some video projects, I would encourage you to give it a go and see if you like it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to follow our MCPL360 Facebook page. We premiere new tech videos every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. And if you missed the premiere on Facebook, you can always watch all of our videos on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our MCPL Mo YouTube channel. This has been Brad. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.